Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. Today we'll be talking about what to expect on the PTCE in 2026. This is a video about PTCB's content outline updates. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with others who may find it helpful too. And if you'd like to have lifetime ad-free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link to my course is in the comments and description. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So first we'll just talk a little bit about the test. So the PTCE, that's the Pharmacy Technician Certification Exam, is the test created by the PTCB, which is the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board, that's required for obtaining the CPHT, or Certified Pharmacy Technician Credential. The PTCE is a two-hour computer-based test with 90 multiple choice questions, so that's all still the same. And the PTCE content areas include knowledge about medications, patient safety and quality assurance, order entry and processing, and federal requirements. So now we'll just talk a little about the changes that are happening in 2026. So the PTCB has revised the PTCE content outline with changes set to take effect in January of 2026. So the same content areas are still being tested, but the percentage breakdown for each one has changed and there are some slight changes in the details. So we'll just look at each of the content areas here and just I'll tell you just kind of about how that has changed as far as the percentage of each of the area. So with medications, um, if you take the test through December of 2025, that's still going to be 40%. Um, beginning in January of 2026, that's going to decrease to about 35% of the test. Patient safety and quality assurance um, through December of this year, um, it's 26.25%. Beginning in January of 2026, that's going to decrease to 23.75%. So a little decrease there as well. With order entry and processing um, through December of 2025, that's 21.25%. Uh, beginning in January, it's going to increase slightly to 22.5%. Um, with federal requirements um, through December of 2025, it's 12.5%. And beginning in January, it's going to go up to 18.75%. So a little bit of a jump there. Okay, we'll talk a little more just about the changes for 2026. And just kind of looking at what this means for the number of questions. So with the medications, um, if you take the test through December of 2025, you'll see about 36 questions that will be about medications. Beginning in January of 2026, it'll be about 32 questions. Um, for patient safety and quality assurance, um, currently it's 24 questions through 2025, and it will be about 21 questions beginning January 2026. Um, with order entry and processing, currently you'll see about 19 questions. Um, beginning in January, there'll be about 20 questions, so it's, it's not a big change with that one. Um, with federal requirements, um, through December 2025, there are about 11 questions, and beginning January of 2026, there'll be about 17 questions you'll see. So it's still 90 questions, but they're just broken up a little differently now. So we'll talk about each category, and I'm going to show you just the differences specifically of what has changed and what's covered on the test. So under the medications category, as I said, this is about 35% of the test, or about 32 questions out of the 90. This still includes generic names, brand names, and classifications of medications. Um, this is new. It's now therapeutic duplications is, is one the con on the content outline. And this means patients having multiple medications for the same indication or from the same drug class. Um, still on the content outline is common or life-threatening drug interactions and contraindications. This includes drug-drug, drug-dietary supplement, drug-laboratory, drug-nutrient, and drug-disease. Uh, medication strengths and doses, dosage forms, routes of administration, special handling and administration instructions, and duration of therapy. That's still the same. Um, common or severe medication side effects, adverse effects, and allergies. Um, with indications of medications, that's still on there, but they have removed and dietary supplements. That's no longer listed on the content outline, so it's just focusing on in indications of medications. 
Um, drug stability is still there, which is the conditions and time a drug remains stable. And this includes for oral suspensions, insulins, reconstitutables, injectables, and vaccinations. Um, still on there is proper storage of medication. This, in, this includes temperature ranges, light sensitivity, and restricted access. So some differences now, we'll just kind of highlight those in the medication knowledge area. So therapeutic equivalence has been removed. And as I mentioned, therapeutic duplication is on there. That has been kind of put in the place of it. And so therapeutic duplication, um, what we talked about, that's basically the multiple medications for the same indication. Therapeutic equivalence, that dealt more with generic substitutions for brand names. So that's, that's a change. And then narrow therapeutic index drugs or NTI medications, that's been removed from the content outline. And also physical and chemical incompatibilities related to non-sterile compounding and reconstitution. That's been removed. So on the another category, the second highest category is the patient safety and quality assurance. This was about 23.75% of the test starting in January 2026, and will be it's approximately 21 questions. So still on there is the high alert and risk medications and look-alike sound-alike medications. Um, error prevention strategies, which includes the right medication to the right patient, tall man lettering, separating inventory, leading and trailing zeros, barcode usage, limiting use of error-prone abbreviations. All that's still the same on there. Um, issues that require pharmacist intervention, such as drug utilization review, DUR, adverse drug events, um, OTC recommendation, therapeutic substitution, misuse, adherence, and um, it said on the old content outline, post-immunization follow-up, that, that now says post-immunization delivery care, which is, is pretty close. Um, also, allergies and drug interactions. Um, the event reporting procedures, such as medication errors, adverse effects, product integrity, MedWatch, and VAERS has been added to this, which is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. Um, near miss, root cause analysis, or RCA, and also that's been added to this is continuous quality improvement, or CQI. Um, types of prescription errors, um, that's still on there, and that includes incorrect dose, quantity, patient, drug, and they've added route of administration. They have taken off abnormal dose and early refill under types of prescription errors. Um, for the next one, they had, instead of saying hygiene, and cleaning standards, they've changed that to infection prevention procedures and cleaning standards. So that's pretty close the same thing. Just changed the wording, I think, just to indicate you know what that's for. And that includes hand washing, personal protective equipment or PPE, cleaning, counting trays, countertop, and equipment. Okay, with the next category, order entry and processing, that makes up the next biggest section. Um, it's about 22.5% now, as I've said, and about 20 questions. They have removed procedures to compound non-sterile products, including ointments, mixtures, liquids, emulsions, enemas, and suppositories. That's been removed from the content outline. But still on there are formulas, calculations, ratios, proportions. They have removed allegations from that list. Um, conversions, SIG codes, like BID, TID, and the Roman numerals. Abbreviations, medical terminology, and symbols for day supply, quantity, dose, concentration, and dilutions. So a lot of that's still the same. Um, they've, in, they've left on their equipment and supplies required for drug administration, including diabetic supplies, inhalers, oral, and injectable syringes. And they have added the, uh, the following categories, just as examples of these, including filters, dilution solutions, immunization supplies, and nebulizers and they have taken package size and unit dose off of that. Um, they've, they've continued to keep on the content outline lot numbers, expiration dates, and national drug code or NDC numbers. And I have a note here just to show you just a quick review or maybe new to some of you what an NDC number is. Um, and this is a unique 10 or 11 digit number assigned to each medication and divided into three segments. So you have the first segment is the manufacturer code, the second segment is the product code, and the package size is the last segment. So I have an example here where um, you have a number 0143, 
that indicates that that's Westward Pharmaceuticals. 9939, that would be the product code indicating what it is, and that one particularly is for amoxicillin 500 milligram. And then the package size, the O5, would indicate that's a 500 capsule bottle. Um, continuing to be on the content outline include procedures for identifying and returning dispensable, non-dispensable, and expired medications and supplies. And this includes credit return, return to stock, and reverse distribution. So that one's still completely the same. Okay, and the last content area are federal requirements. This makes up the smallest portion of the PTCE, but it has increased from what it was from for uh, 2026. So it's 18.75% or about 17 out of the 90 questions you'll see are related to federal requirements. So this includes federal requirements for storage. They've added storage into this, um, this segment of the content outline. So federal requirements for storage, handling, and disposal of non-hazardous and hazardous. And they've added P-list as an example here, so you're going to want to know about the P-list. And pharmacological substances and wastes. And they've changed the wording there. It did say pharmaceutical substances and waste. That's just really just a, like a change in the wording. Um, federal requirements for controlled substance prescriptions. This includes new refill and transfer and DEA controlled substance schedules. And just to give you a review or just a little bit of learning right now, um, I've included what those are. So the Schedule 1 substances means there is no medical use and have high abuse potential. Schedule 2, these are substances with high abuse potential and dependence. Um, Schedule 3, these are moderate to low dependence and less abuse. Schedule 4, these have low dependence and abuse potential. And Schedule 5, these have a lower potential for abuse. Um, within the federal requirements, they still have one there, the federal requirements for receiving, storing, ordering, labeling, dispensing, and returning, they've kind of changed the language there. Instead of reverse distribution here, they put returning. Um, take back programs for loss or theft of and destroying controlled substances. Um, it's still on there about the federal restricted drug programs and related medication processing requirements, including, including pseudoephedrine, risk evaluation and mitigation strategies, or RIMS. Um, and they, for the FDA requirements of medication recalls, that's still on there, but they have taken off the FDA requirements for devices, supplies, supplements, and classifications. So you're really just going to want to focus on the FDA requirements for medication recalls. And one thing they've added to the federal requirements to know about is the FDA product serialization, tracking, tracing, handling, and quarantining requirements. And this all comes under the Drug Supply Chain Security Act. So that's something you're definitely going to want to study about. Okay, so just kind of look at this as a review. So here's some study tips just for things to focus on in these areas. So for medications, which I said that was about 35% of the test, um, you're going to want to review the top 200 drugs flashcards to learn brand and generic names and indications. So that's, you know, about a third of the test there is just your medications. So that, that's a great one to really focus in on. Um, and patient safety and quality assurance, this is another big portion of the test, 23.75%. Just want to be sure you have a good understanding of medication error prevention and reporting, cleaning standards, and when pharmacist intervention is required. Um, with order entry and processing, be sure you know your SIG, code, SIG codes, how to do calculations, um, lot and NDC numbers, expirations and returns. And with federal requirements, you want to know DEA controlled substance schedules and laws, the FDA recall requirements, remember four medications, um, handling and disposal and serialization and tracking of, the, um, of medications now under that new act. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to see more of my pharmacy learning videos. And if you'd like lifetime ad-free access to my pharmacy learning videos and handouts of my slides, please consider enrolling in my online course today. The link is in the comments and descriptions. Thank you.